Hey, good morning, guys. It's uh, Captain AJ here with AMB Solar Adventures. Uh, this morning, I'm going to show you how to do uh, strip baits. Uh, something we really started doing a lot more here recently, especially last year, we noticed a shortage of uh, cigar minnows. Uh, we transitioned to uh, using Bonita strips and some black fin strips, and it really did really well. It produced quite a bit every trip we did. Um, and actually, we were able to use the strips multiple times versus just getting like one one strip out of the bait, like if you would a cigar minnow. Um, so I'm going to go through the whole process, uh, how we set them up and what we do. All right, so here we have our bonita, good sharp knife, and I like to keep a uh, sharpener uh, on hand just uh, as you as you need it. Uh, the key is having a really sharp knife, and you know it's going to allow you to really get in and cut a lot of that meat away. And it's going to be able to produce a lot prettier bait versus a, a dull knife, uh, especially with the bonita. They can get real mushy. I've frozen these and then I just defrosted them this morning, so that way they're going to be uh, really easy to slice. Pretty much our bonita. Any bonita will work, like size wise. Uh, I've used uh, blackfin, skipjacks. Uh, I've even made strips out of uh, some uh, small dolphin that we had. Works really good. Um, but really, the bonita seemed to work really, really well. Everything likes to eat a bonita. So I'll start with a little one. It's a little easier to process sometimes. You'll take, flip it over just like you would. Uh, you would take and uh, flay any of the fish. And I'm not worried about the meat. Honestly, I don't. I don't really want the meat. You could use it for chum or something like that. We've done that a lot. Uh, but right now, I'm just focusing on the the uh, skin itself. That's where I, my strip bait's going to come from. Flip around to the other side. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, taking away the meat and trying to get down to the skin. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a slow process. You don't want to do it all at one time because you could nick the skin. And once you nick the skin, then you know, essentially that bait is going to be ruined and you're going to want to cut that piece away, uh, or that section away there. This one's still quite, it's a little bit frozen. And I'm just working that meat, just kind of slowly uh, slicing it off, trying to uh, be as gentle as I can. This fish is still pretty frozen, which is good, but it also makes it a little difficult to uh, cut through since he's uh, not completely or semi thawed out. You got your bones, and we'll get those bones out as well. Wow. 
So we got our fillet trimmed down to where we have just a little bit of meat left, which is it's fine because I want to take and brine this and I want a little bit a little meat on there to keep it uh, firm and, and give it that really good flap. If it's just if it's just skin, then uh, it won't hold up and, and last as long, especially when you brine it. I'm gonna take flip it over. Now I'm just going to start making my strips. You're looking for that, that uh, spade shape. You got to mimic that tail. And then we'll trim this up. We'll clean this up here on the side. One thing about them is that I've had really pretty ones, and I've had some really not so pretty ones, and they all caught fish. So don't don't beat yourself up. Uh, you're not trying to sell them, you're just trying to catch fish with them. I'll take a little bit of the meat as I go. If I see you know a little bit little bit pieces of meat that are kind of sticking up where it's gonna kind of bulge out, and that's gonna affect the way the bait swims. So I'm just gonna continue to refine and clean up as I go. So that will be the tail of the bait, it will be the head of the bait right here. I'll, uh, I'll show you our rigs in here in just a little while and uh, how we run that, but pretty much that is it. Um, after you take and brine that, it's gonna harden up a little bit and uh, give you really good action. Uh, and you can make them longer. Typically, this is about what we're looking for. This size, you know, kind of a medium bait, uh, almost the size of a medium bally. I will to take this piece right here and I'm gonna make this one a, a really long bait more for uh, a, a larger uh, rig, double hook rig uh, for uh, Wahoo. That's a real pretty bait right there. I leave a little bit of a uh, kind of a point on this end because when I screw and I put my pin through it and I screw down my uh, spring, that's going to really bite down and give it that uh, that uh, bite on it, and it's going to hold that bait in there as it swims. And you can come right in here and kind of trim the corners up so that way it uh, swims a little bit better. But reality of it, this is going to get pushed down and it's going to be. Um, Covered by the uh, either an islander or a sea small lure or you know a sea witch or something like that. So it doesn't really matter if it's not trimmed perfect because no matter what, this is the action that you're looking for in the water, and then this is what the, the fish are going to hit and uh, really give you that strike that you're looking for. Okay. 
This will be a little bit smaller one. I'm just kind of cutting it out. And you know, using using the baits, all the bait that I have, try not to waste any of it. Making you know, some might be longer, some might be long, um, shorter, but that that still be a perfect bait right there to throw, especially throw on a single um, pin rig. So that's pretty much one side of a, a typically small bonito. Uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, five foot strips out of that. Looking at maybe getting five or six out of the other one. Um, and a lot of these strips will last you at least one to maybe three fish. And the good thing is, is if you don't use them, you can put them right back in the freezer. As you're working, keep your uh, station clean. It's really going to help with sliding the bait around, and your knife is not going to get uh, really sticky with the uh, with the oils from the fish. Bonita, just like any other tuna, is really oily, and uh, it will have to, it will stick to your blade and uh, cause you to have some bad cuts. I like to look at this side and see where I really want to pull my strip from because I really like having these black strips and then, then that combination in between. That's just really pretty right there. Um, most of the, the pelagia fish that we're hunting, the wahoo, uh, especially the big kings and even the, uh, the big mahi, they're eating um, bonita. They're looking for small bonita, especially the little bullet bonitas. And uh, that mimics just a baby bonita uh, to, to the core right there. When you're cutting the strips, I like to look at it on the uh, skin side and then flip it over on the meat side and make your cuts on the meat side. You uh, tend, it's tend to have a, a cleaner cut. You're really pushing that skin up against the uh, cutting board and it's allowing you to get a really good firm cut um, all the way through. Pretty big. That'll work. Now I'm gonna take this one right here and make me a very large bait because I've got some larger uh, Wahoo rigs that we're gonna use tomorrow. And I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger than I would for these uh, smaller ones. Um, just because it's gonna give me a lot better profile, a lot bigger profile, and uh, gonna perform like, or like a larger fish. You know? Much better. You could take it. Like I said earlier, clean this up. We're gonna put a spring on this, so it's not really gonna matter because all this bait is gonna get pinched together, and then uh, with the spring through a pin rig. So here's two of the rigs that I, I made up last night. Uh, See you smile rigs uh, with some mylar. Uh, great, great, uh, great rigs to use. All right, so to go over our baits, um, this is a see you smile rig. I rigged it with a hundred pound leader, crimped it off with a swivel, uh, so that way if the bait uh, like um, uh, spins in the water, it's not going to kink up and it's not going to it's going to allow that bait to swim naturally. Uh, we rigged this one with a double rig, uh, two uh, eight off hooks. Set it up with a pin style um, connection with a spring. And the spring is gonna slide down and go over the uh, tip of the bait or top of the bait and screw into the uh, wire itself. 
I rigged this with, with a stiff uh, little bit of wire right here. It's still flexible. It's still going to be able to move, uh, you know, fight the fish. It's not going to be too stiff. But what's going to happen is it's going to allow it to be stiff and then allow that, that um, tip of that bait to swim. All right, so I'm going to slide the, uh, the lure itself up. I'm going to leave my pin rig. We call it a pin rig, it's just got a pin in it and then, you know, with a spring, well, you know, it's a standard ballyhoo rig. You can run it ballyhoo. The only difference is, is that if this was rigged for a ballyhoo, the pin would be spin around the other way uh, to go through the uh, nose of the ballyhoo. This is going to be down and it's going to come through the, the, uh, the strip bait just like this. All right. So I'm going to measure out my placements for my hook. Come there. For my first one, and then my second one, all the way through. And then I'm gonna push the pin all the way through. And again, that's why I left just a little bit of a, of a kind of a, I love just a little bit of a, a point here and it doesn't matter about being perfect because the, the spring is going to slide down over the top of it and then it's going to secure the bait so that way it doesn't come off. Tighten it down where it's kind of pinching that bait in there now. Alright, slide my Blew her over the top. She is pretty. I would definitely eat that if I was a fish. Okay, on this one, this is a little different rig. This is a lighter rig. We use this one more for our half day trips, looking for uh, mahi or kingfish or something like that. It's still set up with a wire rig, not very long. Um, it's got it's a, it's a complete wire rig versus a mono rig. Single hook set up with a pin, pin set, style setup and a spring. This is actually a blue water candy uh, it's only 43 pounds, so it's not extremely heavy. So this is not something that I would I would run in the spread if I was closer to the stream. And I know there's a really possible good possibility for Wahoo. Uh, Wahoo would cut this right in half. Okay, same thing. Lay out my bait. I got my Bonita strip. Take it, lay it down. Figure out where my pin is going to go and then where the hook placement is going to come out. Looking at where the J is on my hook and I'm going to slide it right through all the way out. Down into the base of the J, tighten the, uh, the skin up or the, uh, the strip itself. That way it's nice and uh, straight. Doesn't have any uh, twist in it. Run my spring down. Round the pin, tighten it all the way up. Again, I'm trying to bite down on the meat here, so where the meat is uh, secure to the wire itself. And that's gonna prevent it from slipping. Gotta give a once over of my bait, make sure she's pretty good to go where don't have any like uh, large pieces of skin sticking out or meat overhanging
Works great for kings, mahi, pretty much anything on, on what we would run on a half day trip that we're gonna be uh, chasing. This bait right here, we'll get it done. It's not as long as the baits that we did earlier. Um, so that way, that's why I only have one hook, or single hook. In. The last thing we need to do is preserve our bait for uh, the trip on shore. Whether you're gonna use this uh, tomorrow or a week from now or, or even longer, uh, as long as you keep it uh, clean and healthy, and meaning where it's not gonna, it's always gonna be cold either in the refrigerator or a freezer, uh, it's gonna last you for a long time. You can freeze the bait and thaw it out and, and actually freeze it and thaw it out a couple of times if you don't, uh, don't actually use it and it'll be okay. One of the uh, things that's gonna make it last longer is kind of broad that box. It works great. It's easy to get it into the local uh, shop. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to apply that brine to both sides of the bait. that brine in. This is really going to make that bait last a lot longer. It's actually going to toughen it up. It's going to toughen it up. And overall, Sure, it make it longer, last longer. I'm gonna take this and uh, I've got a couple of Tupperware um, bins that I'll lay these flat. I want to try to keep the the, uh, the bonita strip itself from getting twisted or bent over and freezing that way. Try to keep it as flat as possible. Just like All right. Well, now that I have my uh, my strip baits already uh, prepped and some of them already rigged. This is the uh, container that I put them in. It's nothing more than an old uh, uh, bait tray. This is actually uh, Cabela's bag that I used to have, uh, wore it out, and uh, I just kind of use it as uh, as a freezer box. I can fold this up, put it in the freezer, and uh, use it. And you basically, put this on top of the cooler on the ice. The time you get you know to where you're going to be fishing, it to be defrosted enough to where you can deploy one of the baits, and it works really well. When you get back home, you just take whatever baits you didn't use. Snap back together, put it back in the uh, freezer, and you're good to go. All right, there you have it. Uh, final product, we have our strip bait, our stripped uh, bonita. Again, you can make it with multiple different uh, species of fish. Um, bonita, skipjacks, black fans work well, like I said in the previously, the uh, strip will work as well. Uh, but uh, for overall, your bonita is probably the best. Um, it's so easy to come across. And, everything needs a bonita. We run these on a planer rod or, or we're gonna run them on a uh, outrigger or right behind the boat. Don't like run these on a shotgun. You know, sometimes your small or something like that or our schoolie dolphin will come up and chew a couple of back of it off right below the hook and miss it. You should still probably possibly get a hook up with it but it's not effective as if it had the whole full strip or it's just like getting the you know getting the ballyhoo cut off uh so i won't run this on the shotgun especially if it's two three hundred feet back um that way you don't have to worry about that i like to keep it where i can see it and see how it's swimming this is down sweet i mean just so this is going to you know go down a little deep so getting it on an outrigger it's going to keep it just below the surface but where i can see it swimming pretty uh or you can put it next to your profit on kind of a, a left or a right short. Again, the planer is probably one of the, the killer locations for these, uh, any kind of strip bait. We catch a lot of our wahoo, our big kings, uh, off a planer rod with this bait right here. Uh, I recommend color, uh, blues, greens, pinks, whites, any of the standard, you know, uh, ballyhoo rigs that you would run. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let us know. Also, if you have any recommendations on or other options or techniques that you've done or you've used, let me know. I'd love to hear them. We're always learning, always trying to get better.
Yeah.